Welcome to this 12 minute flow state talk break. Do you ever feel overwhelmed, stuck, or even crippled by fear? Here's me sharing an experience of being stuck and crippled by fear when creating this podcast, and how Alan Watts, Dr. Huberman, and some of my own experiences as a DJ helped me walk through the fear. Lately, as I've been unable to accomplish all the things I've wanted for flow state, I've started to feel overwhelmed. I've started to feel fear. Maybe I won't be able to create the vision I have for our flow state. During this time, Alan Watts has been such a good friend. As I've been exploring his talks, he recently asked the great question, is existence serious? He goes on, if we say you must survive, life is earnest and I've got to go on. Then your life is a drag and not a game. Now it's my basic metaphysical axiom that existence, the physical universe, is basically playful. It isn't going anywhere. There isn't some destination that it ought to arrive at. It is best understood by analogy with music. Because music as an art form is essentially playful. You say you play the piano. You don't work the piano. Music differs from travel. When you travel, you are trying to get somewhere. And of course, we, being a very compulsive and purposeful culture, are busy getting everywhere faster and faster until we eliminate the distance between places altogether. What happens as a result of that? The two ends of your journey become the same place. So you eliminate the distance and you eliminate the journey. But the fun of the journey is to travel. In music, though, one doesn't make the end of the composition the point of the composition. If that were so, the best conductors would be those who played fastest. And there would be composers who wrote only finales. People would go to concerts just to hear one crashing chord. But you see, we have a schooling system which gives a completely different impression. It's all graded, and what we do is we put the child into the corridor of the grade system. We put them into kindergarten, and that's a great thing because when you finish that, you'll get to grade one. And then, come on, first grade leads to second grade, and so on. And then you get out of grade school. You've got high school, and it's revving up. The thing is coming. And then you've got college, and then you get into graduate school. And when you're through with graduate school, you go out and join the world. And then you get into some racket where you're selling insurance. And there you've got a quota to make. And all along that thing is coming. It's coming. It's coming. The great thing, the success you're working for is coming. Then you wake up one day about 40 years old and you say, my God, I've arrived. I'm there. And you don't feel very different from what you've always felt. And there's a slight letdown because you feel it was a hoax. And it was a hoax, a dreadful hoax. They made you miss everything. We thought of life by analogy with a serious pilgrimage, which had a serious purpose at the very end. And the thing was to get to that end, to get to that success, whatever that is. But we missed the point the whole way along. It was a musical thing, and you were supposed to sing or to dance while the music 
was being played. I want to talk about play from a more scientific point of view, with the help of Dr. Huberman. Here, he talks about how play puts our brain in an optimal state of performance and long-term growth. What's not obvious is that the state of playfulness is actually what allows you to perform best, because the state of playfulness offers you the opportunity to engage in novel types of behaviors and interactions that you would not otherwise be able to access if you were so focused on the outcome. So a state of playfulness is absolutely critical, not just during play, but during competitive scenarios. When we are hyper-focused on something and are rigidly attached to the outcome, we can't engage in flexible thinking. If we are trying to get better at something, let's say you've hit a wall in athletic performance or cognitive performance, the way to actually expand your skills is to engage in this low-stakes practice of, I'm just going to play and tinker. I'm going to explore in a way that it doesn't really matter if I achieve the outcome. This is counterintuitive because we're taught to think we need to just drill and drill. There's a place for that. But when we engage in play or low stakes tinkering, we have modest levels of endogenous opioids being released in our system and low levels of epinephrine and adrenaline. This state is only possible when the stakes are low enough that we're not stressed. That combination really allows the prefrontal cortex to explore different possibilities in ways that can truly expand our capabilities over time. So there you have it, the importance of play. This actually reminds me of my experience as a DJ. When I started playing live in front of people, I was both excited but terrified. And so I would plan and prepare my entire performance. I would know exactly what songs I'd play and in what order. This worked sometimes, but it also failed many times. I realized that planning my performance completely cut me off from the audience and their energy. I was not present with them, as I simply went through the motions of what I had planned to play. The thing that stopped me from playing completely live was the fact that I was afraid of playing the wrong song. I was afraid of a bad performance. But what's funny was that the attachment to a stellar performance was exactly what was leading me to these so-called bad performances. So I decided to try to destroy this fear, or at least face it and accept it, that what I had feared wasn't so bad after all. From that point on, I would start intentionally playing the quote-unquote wrong song during my performances. As I saw the crowd turn away and stop dancing, I would soak myself in the rejection I was so afraid of feeling. I would sit in it and show myself that I was okay, that I was not going to die, and that I would be just fine. Over time, I became very comfortable with this feeling, so much so that I completely stopped planning my performances. I simply showed up at a show and played what felt right, what felt connected to the vibe of the party. Sometimes I'd get it right. But sometimes I wouldn't. But that feeling would no longer scare me. And so I became more confident and experimental as a DJ. And honestly, just more fun. And this energy of low stakes, hey, we're just out here having fun, playing, is what the crowd would feel. What I now know is that I was engaging in a low stakes type of play and tinkering 
exactly what Dr. Huberman was talking about. A state that created flexible thinking. And as a result, I can't really speak to if my performances have improved. But what I can say is I'm having a lot more fun. I want to point out that it's not like I completely gave up on the outcome, gave up on having an incredible performance. No, what I was actually doing was balancing taking it seriously and playing. I would seriously consider what I was feeling from the crowd, be completely present with them, but at the same time accept that the outcome, the song that I'm about to play, may not totally blow their minds. I was sitting on the razor's edge of taking it seriously and just playing. I want to leave you with two quotes to end this episode. Here, Dr. Huberman talks about the importance of play and longevity. When you look across the kingdom of all animals, what you find is that animals that engage in playful behaviors for the longest period of time, are also the animals that have the greatest degree of neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to change in response to experience. Put differently, animals that only play for a small fraction of their entire life have rigid brains that don't learn new things. So there you go. Playing is good for you. It's funny, uh, I'm sure all kids hearing this laugh at the idea that we need to be told to play, but it makes sense. As adults, we've gone through several years of training to not play, but we know the consequences of not enough play. And to really nail this point home, here is Alan Watts. We suffer only because we take seriously what the gods made for fun. I'm glad to be back recording. I hope to keep it going, but more importantly, I hope to keep playing. And that's it for this flow state talk break. What would you like to do next? Do you want to jump back into work with either a 30 or 60 minute session? Do you want to take a break with some ambient nature sounds? Or do you want to listen to another talk break? Choose the video that best suits your mood right now.